So hi guys, welcome to yet another live recording of Podvice. As Woo! usual, I'm your co-host, uh, Ronnie and Keo. And as always, I'm joined by the lovely uh, Miss Joy Gishobi, you know, our main host. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, just a small recap, you know, the last time we were having, you we were on this couch, we were speaking on, you know, our notable win, you know, the yeah. good guys at APVA, you know, awarded us with uh, an award and a... Social, social and advocacy, advocacy. Yeah, yeah you know so you're still are celebrating that win mm-hmm. and yeah other than that also i think you were talking on a show that you were we are yet to we teased the show yeah yeah exactly we that, teased that, the show yeah that, that, yeah that we are yet to to launch and it's gonna be launching really really soon mm-hmm. yeah but you know thank you thank you for making time you know to, to happy be new year guys <laughs> yeah that's actually that's where we started off, right yeah. happy new year yeah. from yeah. Yeah. Happy new year, guys. Yeah. we really yeah. hope that this year is a good year for you even though it already Shala. started on a very high note but right. imagine january is already over right it's january so fast i feel like this is the fastest january that has ever been and it's a rainy one too mm. yeah. see january na kwanga ja because of the ja. yeah right right so but how has 2023 been like what do you think 2023 was like for for advice yeah i think that a lot happened right right i think it colors what we want for 2024 mm. But I feel like yeah, it, it set a good foundation for us, you know, just moving forward. Yeah. Um, what yeah. was your favorite thing? What was what would you say was your favorite episode? Hmm. Interesting. Um. We. Okay. So first off, like with 2023, I think that's when we fully went. You know, our vision. You know, um, having the two your vision, or having mm-hmm. um, you know, Kev, you know, one of our amazing co-hosts who decided to segue into now the BTS. So <laughs> shout out to Kev as well. Um. Yeah. But I think my biggest takeaway for 2023 was just you know we were able to. Um, get into the visual space, you know, in regards to pod, in regards to podcasting, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was amazing. We had also Ayeko, you know, who also, you know, segued into something else. So shout out to him as well. Um, yeah, but I think my my biggest achievement was just, you know, um, going the extra mile to be able to, you know, um, set up, you know, the visual aspect of uh, yeah, podvice, right. you know, just to show, you know, just because I think it's always nice when you can see, you know, people's reactions and you know how people are just, you know, um, how they're actually engaging in real time. Mm-hmm. So I think that's amazing. Um, I think one of uh, my best, what what was my best episode? My best episode was when you were speaking on. I think the question that was being posed to me was if my if my partner, and I think that was even one of my most vulnerable um, um, episodes. You know, where I was just speaking on if my actually like my mom, you know, is actually um, comfortable with me pursuing what I'm currently pursuing. You know, yeah. yeah, and you know she she has seen that you know you can actually make a living of this. Make so living. yeah, she's definitely comfortable with. It. I think that was the most vulnerable for me. I think the other the others were mostly inclined on you know social comment, political commentary. Point, yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know they were mostly inclined about you know the current state of affairs of our country. You yeah, know, but so. it was also such a learning tangent for all yeah, of us. For sure, for I sure. learned a lot. I didn't know a lot about AI and the thing. Right, and yeah. then I feel like you continued to like heavily pursue NFTs and mm-hmm. what all, oh, yeah, yeah, although sure. they all go over my head. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even yeah, I think it was a good opportunity for for guys to, you know, experimental. to just learn, yeah, to just learn a bit about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and even maybe I could just speak a bit of. I just speak of it generally, like how my twenty twenty three has been. You know, um, I just circling back to the whole nft convention right um me and a couple of people were able to successfully um host the second edition of kenyan nft summit you know mm-hmm. um luckily we had sponsors from south africa and um the good guys at hug hug is sort of like an organization that basically just um tries to empower artists you know by hosting um, basically um allowing brand visibility you know giving them opportunities and grants you know to just be able to leverage um or even level up their artistry so yeah you know we were able to where um, was it um it was at alliance alliance um in late november you know mm-hmm. you know, it was fully fully um booked and packed so you know it was really it was really really amazing so yeah i'm just glad that you are you know we are also um scaling up in regards to um finding opportunities for artists in kenya yeah, I so, feel like yeah. it was very niche. Yeah. But it's now very, it's growing for oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. But it's, it had like a very niche community, the mm-hmm. NFT, and mm-hmm. a lot of it was just education and, oh, yeah. and trying to tell people what NFT was. Mm-hmm. But now exactly. I think many people are coming up to mm-hmm. her with mm-hmm. what it is, or they're even getting curious enough. Yeah, exactly. But it's still it still needs to grow yeah 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 it's sort Can of I like a niche yeah those grants and mm. for the artists yeah what's usually like the criteria for them do the artists actually get these opportunities when the money is mm. is, oh. is 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 raised yeah. what criteria do they have compete 
and then the winner mm-hmm. gets mm-hmm. or do they look at a body of work like what's yeah. usually the criteria for yeah. some of these things mm. okay that's a good question I feel like now it's starting to be like you know I didn't talk you yeah because I'm, I'm, I'm in many heat like yeah. I, I'm not I'm not sure because yeah. they can't all look the same oh yeah for sure okay so so maybe so I could speak, for the one you went to right, yeah right, yeah so um I could speak on the uh grant fund that Mbogi NFT was hosting you know because mm-hmm. I'm part of the Mbogi NFT team so um yeah one of the funds that we had is the Mbogi onboarding fund right so we had um. Uh, we did like an open call for artists you know who are residing in Kenya Kenyan artists who uh, want to join in the space so we sort of like had uh, an open call where artists um, applied and then we vetted them we hosted really a space for artists you know to just come through and share share about their vision and you know what they aim to achieve you know um after all this so yeah we um we vetted a couple of artists you know and uh, yeah and we gave them an onboarding fund which amounted to around i think 15k or 20k that about you know just um enough to make them be able to pay gas fee and be able to mint their works you know when they start so you know to sort of like just an onboarding it's like somebody's onboarding also fund. seeing it yeah yeah exactly you know just making sure that they're seen and also just you know just giving them some push so that they can be able to mint their works you know so just it's an onboarding fund really so yeah we were able to onboard i think it was 10 10 artists you know mm. and this 10 this 10 artists have been able to also you know just grow their brand and you know just ensure that you know they have market access and you know just some good brand visibility for themselves and you know these artists are doing great for themselves i could speak on one i think she's called wanji and wanji is also some a really good amazing she's also an amazing artist you know she's been, like ever since she got into that um the blockchain um nft space you know she's been able to you know just scale up and she's been able to have her work um showcased on different different places the different spaces yeah. so i think it's, it's been amazing yeah yeah but 2023 was it's okay yeah. for me i think it was so i learned so much i yeah. won't lie yeah um got a new job yeah. um started this yeah. um for advice for people sure. recognizing you from way back when for sure um being <laughs> comfortable on camera Salem. yeah i feel like i had a lot of inner work in 2023 mm. not being as as self-conscious mm. trying to be like oh maybe i can do this Right, radio right. or audio thing just you never things, know yeah. Where, yeah it was very trying like this you don't know what the next step is mm. and then so getting into pod vice mm. arranging sets and then i think when you start such a thing it teaches you like things can happen you just have right. to start for sure, like for you sure. can i had somebody say dreams die at the planning stage mm. because you can plan something for so long until right. you just you just you 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 choke the life out of it because right, you're just right. planning 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 mm-hmm. planning mm-hmm. and like there's also this joke for when you take a picture the longer you look at it mm-hmm. it's like with one eye gets bigger yeah one lip the becomes like yeah. Yeah, yeah you just and then if you see the same picture 10 10 days later you're like oh this was actually a really cool picture right, i right. think it's the same with planning yeah and projects yeah, for sure for you sure. plan for too long after all you just have to be like let's do this right yeah you, you get too complacent i think yeah and i also um there's a i think it's a nightingale who said this like like um ideas are only useful when they're executed right and then yeah, there execute, are things you will never idea. know until you know so until i feel like my biggest thing is in 2023 the biggest thing i learned is learning by doing mm-hmm like learning by doing sure, you can sure. read as many books as you want please mm-hmm. prepare yeah. but if you feel like you want to be in content creation or anything um anything that's not really common or even if it's common you just have to do it like execution it's yeah. like business you can if you want to just start it close right. open close up i don't know try it out for yourself yeah right? so that you can actually know everything that goes into running access Business. yeah so i think that was my biggest takeaway for 2023 learning mm. by doing mm. and then another thing was um as i reflect yeah. criticism just learning how to learn mm. without if somebody brings something to your attention that yeah. you can be like okay so how do i change mm. whether it's on a professional level or a personal level mm. just a lot of introspective works yeah, <laughs> you yeah. become too much self-aware of yourself okay mm. you, you drive yourself crazy but yeah. it, it 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 works for sure like for i just sure. felt like 2023 was that for me and mm. i was so grateful wow so let's now segue into 2024 <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was in farm for the, for the first time you know i think like this year i was just trying to start it you know from like a different perspective i wasn't trying to be outside as much yeah, yeah i think just 
like I feel like I'm at a stage in life where I I like I savor in or like I'm always just looking forward to chilling with fam, you know, because I feel like for the most part I I have been sort of like been trying to run away from you know like the whole the family, family gathering you yeah. know, aspect, you know. So yeah, this year was just I think it was more introspective for me, you know, just having to chill with family and you know, just just you know taking it in, you yeah. know, for the most part. Yeah. I was alone. <laughs> wow. I was alone with the Lord. Wow. Hey, it's yeah. just you and God. Yeah. I was planning on going for cash and me, but it didn't work. So mm. I was like, you know what? I think I can do this at home. And mm. it ended up being such an intimate experience for oh, yeah. me. Oh, yeah. And then it's just so much clarity. Mm. And then I feel like when you're alone, you just you take things it's more authentic and more vulnerable because mm, you have sure. no one around exactly and you're yeah. not trying to like put up a certain face or like a facade you know just yeah. you being a genuine self exactly yeah. so my mom was in shags my dad was at work my bro went to his friends mm. so either way we yeah. wouldn't have the family thing yeah, yeah. but yeah church yeah. didn't work out but i just had it at home it was good yeah, yeah. so you took it 2024 what did you think what do you want for 2024 Mm, I think it's just really um experimenting more and just um for me for the most part is just I feel like now I have so many responsibilities you know because I'm I'm trying to I'm juggling a lot of um hats you know so yeah you know just I'm um, you know scaling up just trying to be as confident as I can you know and just believing in myself mm. yeah um yeah I think that's that's my biggest takeaway and also just growing your community and you know and I I also love that for podcasts you know just um to try and you know and bring more people to this couch you know have more and um, diverse conversations you know try to just grow podcast as a brand yeah that's yeah. for podcast um i think for me yeah for me it's also just scaling my artistry you know cuz yeah, yeah like like the the other dilemma that i'm having is you know when you wear so many hats you like there's some times that you know you like get into this rabbit hole of just like um thriving in one one section you know and now just forgetting fails. these other ones yeah mm. yeah and even maybe i could add you know um i recently um won um the magret nerobi um photo competition you know so can i ask you those photos you took how yeah. far ago did you take them um you know it's quite interesting like most of the shots you took them roughly around like two years ago two or three years ago but The, how was the reception when when you first shared those pictures and uh, now because yeah. i feel like it's just been the gift that keeps on giving right right yeah and i feel like more people are coming to like they're actually appreciating the pictures more now um i mean i i just i i don't know but like that's a good thing also like when you are creating them you know you are you are so intentional with everything you know mm-hmm. so you made sure that you know just created this amazing bodies of works that will turn 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 vast time you know so yeah, yeah i'm really I feel like when, when you also create from a place of authenticity something yeah. that you actually like because yeah. your photography is very like there's a lot of storytelling in your photography for sure, for sure. there are people mm. who like the abstract vibes mm. which is just as good yeah. but i feel like when when you're creating when you create something that you like even when people don't receive it at first mm. And then you see for you're that even now yeah. you're very confident even when you stand beside the the mm-hmm. work you've created because you're exactly. like this one I liked exactly. I planned this mm-hmm. and whatever and, and I love what you said you know for the most part it's just you I'm um, coming to terms and you liking what you create right so even if people never really like it you know you don't feel like it's a loss you know for you you know because at the end of, at the end of the day you are creating the work solely for yourself you know mm-hmm. and also um yeah I'd also just love to shout out everyone you know because for the most part it's not I don't do everything it's all you know it's always like a teamwork thing you know so we have I'm um, styling you know I have style stylist come through I have a Model. gaffer yeah I also have you know different models who are able to sort of like evoke different um you know emotions, emotions and yeah. different um aesthetics you know yeah. so yeah, it's always a team a team effort so I'd just love to also shout out you know everyone who came through and helped us create this amazing bodies of works and even since when we were still on this conversation um some of the pictures that we're currently speaking on are currently um being exhibited at Margaret Nairobi um gallery at GTC you know that yeah. just launched so yeah, I think that's a big feat you know yeah so yeah. come through go see all the oh pictures. yeah definitely please when, when, when you're around Westlands you can always um pass by GTC you know they have this um amazing gallery of different um aesthetics of the Nairobi you know city so you know have culture wildlife cityscapes you know yeah, yeah so it's just like a, an amazing um diverse body of Nairobi culture and aesthetics so when you guys get the time please you know just go through check out um stick some pictures and just tag me sure, you know, I yeah. really appreciate it <laughs> so yeah that, that's a bit about that and maybe also if I could add um from that particular um photo competition I was able to 
win two body flight tickets to anywhere in Africa, you know. So I'd also wanna hear, you know, where you guys think I should go to. Uh me and <laughs> one night stay for two tickets for one night stay at GW Marriott, which is also a uh, it's a hotel that just lost the GTC, one of the skyscrapers at GTC. So yeah, you know, I'm really glad for the opportunities and I'm just looking forward to, you know, what 2024 has in store, you know, there's just so much to do, you know, the year just started, so I'm, I'm, I can't, I can't wait to see what happens. Um, in I think, 2024? Yeah, yeah in, in December when we're in this couch, I think it'll just be, you know, I did see, I did see a trend that I think every one of us should make. Yeah. Um, so it's, I don't know that it's a trend, okay. but this person shared. Yeah. She, it was like she's interviewing herself. So she did a New Year's video. Oh, okay. And she's like, girl, did we get the promotion? <laughs> okay. Um, did we find love? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you move out of that place? Okay. Yeah. And this is in January. So it's almost like she was telling herself things that she would like to do. Right, right. And then now she had a reaction oh, video damn. in December of, of all the things. Yeah. She's like, did we get the promotion here? Yeah. Was it what we expected with the bonus? No. And it's just a cool and a light way to, to hold gauge yourself. yourself. Yeah. Try, try, try. And yeah, I think, I think for some, try. it's almost like really, in, like, it becomes really vulnerable for them because mm -hmm. it's just you and the camera. And then you forget right. even the camera is there. You'd yeah, be surprised yeah. the things that are inside of you and the things you would like to achieve. For sure. For and then sure. you just lock it. Mm -hmm. And then as the year ends, you watch the you video and you're like, oh scene. my god, who was that? Like, I've been, I've, my, I've achieved so much. So maybe that would be something because you don't need gear and all yeah, that. Yeah. Your phone is enough. Mm -hmm. It's like sure. a video diary. Yeah. But that one was really cool of the things you need to do yeah. or the things you would like or walk away from. Yeah. And then you do a reaction video of that. Oh, that yeah, yeah. that's amazing. So it's yeah. like you're interviewing right. your future self. And what I love the most about that is like i think just being intentional like having a to-do list of you know what sort of like goals i think goals, goals, yeah. goals yeah but just setting forth things that you want to accomplish this year you know yeah. just sort of like preparing your mind to be able to achieve those things so i think it's, it's really nice and i'm glad that she was able to you know achieve most yeah, i felt like that was yeah. such a really cool trend which yeah. I, I i heavily considered yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but i think right. yeah because you i don't know this year hmm. <laughs> what about this year <laughs> You make a corner. When you're growing, yeah. even when you're still young, yeah. but the life can make you feel like things are not achievable at some yeah, point, right. especially when you get a lot of no's, mm. which I feel like in this um, age group, mm. from like late 20s to in your 30s, yeah. eh, unakwanga, sometimes you get a kiasi. Because that's why you do most of the work. Yeah, you know. time is going. So, I will say this, I would flip it. Yeah. Instead of making ears your ear about like your goals right. and the things that you just want to achieve, yeah. I feel like you should also think of the person. Mm. So as joy, mm. yes I want to achieve all these things, yeah. obviously, mm. but how do I what state do I want to be in? Mm. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, right. physically. Right. Right. So, for example, if it's fitness, it's not just about losing weight and mm. having an aesthetic-looking mm. body. Yeah. It's actually about health mm. or just being able to lift things. Something right, as simple right, as that right, right. that doesn't really have a metric like mm. that or it's not performative. But yeah. you, you're like, bro, Nikipanezi still has a hammer. But now I can do laps. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's like you're focusing on yourself. Yeah, for sure. And you're saying, okay... I want to have these things, but how do I want my mental health to be mm, like? For sure. Man, for sure. I usually have a lot of anxiety or I have anxiety mm, attacks. Mm. What usually brings them in? Oh, okay, or okay. I think I have a uh, an issue with authority. Mm. Why do I have an issue with authority? Like job, if they tell... I think everyone can relate to the fact that sometimes, for example, if you're in corporate, even when you do something wrong, you feel like you don't have that chance to evolve or grow. Yeah. It's like they want you to come in and know everything. Mm. And then when you mess up, you just feel... If you use this doomsday, people usually feel like it's the end of the world yeah, all the, the world time. Is closing in. Yeah. yeah, so I would like for our community as podvice, mm -hmm. even as you go into the year, just to know you can achieve those things and then your mental is really messed up. For sure. And you're for emotionally sure. really stressed like, like, no, and depleted. Not trying to compromise another aspect of it. Yeah. Just having an holistic um, growth. View to, to yeah. growth, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. there's this at our motivational talkers, they, they tell you, you need to do this, get the promotion, get the this, get the this. But, but at all cost. Get a promotion, you have ulcers. <laughs> right. you, you're getting this promotion. And yeah. then you, you hear people 
quit big jobs. Mm. Can you know somebody quit a UN job? Right, right, crazy? because of mental health, yeah. But until you enter those spaces, That's you're like, you know. I see. Yeah, yeah. So if, uh, if, if, if you can make yourself, like, so for me, joy, yeah. me, without all these things, because these things, you may achieve or not achieve them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There are people who usually say they have filler years mm. where they just existed. Yeah, like twenty yeah. twenty was like <laughs> just passed. Yeah. It was, it was just yeah. a filler year. That we don't count it. Yeah. Mm. But if you can make yourself a, a goal mm. where nobody else needs to notice except you, I think mm. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Sure. yeah so yeah. I think that's been my biggest thing mm. that I am caring about in twenty twenty four. Yeah. 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 I love what you said. I think it's just not. Achieving your goals without having to compromise other aspects of your so life. So that you can right. actually enjoy the achievement. Mm-hmm. Without having to compromise your mental health. Because it doesn't make sense when you have this good paying job at your mental health. I, have a, yeah, I actually yeah. think I have a real life example. Yeah. I always remember, I don't know if I've shared my graduation. Okay. It was years back. Mm. I woke up that I didn't know what I was going to wear. <laughs> People plan their graduation ah, outfit. How come they were Atas kujua kwenye nava, niko like ah mi nava. Atas inta kwa na gown. What so? Does it does it really matter? Does it really matter? So I think I wear literally a tank top and some and a skirt, mm. and then I had the gown. I was in a pissy mood. I was so moody, and I'm not mm. a moody person. And then I literally had to snap myself out of it. And I remember the other thing was this supposed to be a very happy day because right. I really supposed worked to be celebrating. hard for it. Mm. Why am I so moody? Why am I pissed? Like I'm just not feeling the joy. Yeah. I had to, you know, I had to be by joy. <laughs> but when I reflected on that year for me finishing, ah yeah 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 yeah, your girl was going through it. I can call her the lecture. You are humble. Unam, yani you just like I need to graduate. I cannot You're not graduate. Yeah. Well, even when they say they don't like, it, what can I do? Please. You know, those people were like, ah, can I your degree? No, 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 no. And then it was so stressful. My project was being marked. A week to graduation. But uh, yeah, I got my reg- week to graduation. I got my results that late. So there was a very real chance. So I think I went on ice. Mm. And so I was just focusing on this thing. Yeah. By the time it came, I didn't know how to celebrate. So it's like all that tension just for sure just, just pile up. Yeah. I don't know if there's something like that has ever happened to you where something is supposed to be a joyous occasion, mm. but it ends up being really you, you're blue and mm. you don't know why you're blue. It's like you have to. Yeah. yeah so it's scary. So yeah. it, you can. I feel like it's like a wedding day here for people. Mm. The planning is so stressful, stressful. Everything yeah. was going on the yeah. day. You yeah. don't even enjoy it. Right. Because yeah, yeah. you just wanted to please everyone. Yeah, I think I. No, the to carry you. Yeah. So that's why you have to carry yourself. And just get the energy. Mm. Yeah. Cindy. Mm. Yeah. But um, into 2024. Because we want a social and advocacy change award, I think that we should continue on the same For sure. breath. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think we can do as for the, like? What do you think of the whole social climate right now? Mm. Just from an observational yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I think there's just so much happening, and then also with the new change, like the change of regime has also you know um, put people in a different mindset. You know that has come with. Uh, more taxes, sorry to say, you know. So you know, like, just people like there's just a lot of people. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. People are just going through it. So I um, mean, yeah, I know there's been a couple of things that have been happening, you know, and the femicide cases. Yeah, there's cases of course, you know, um, just high cost of living, you know. Um, so yeah, I think people are just coming to terms with the current state of affairs of the country. Another thing I think that we have been seeing in the recent past of the, you know, the cases on you know, femicide and what has been happening in the country. I think you know um, every day we wake up to a new news piece that you know um, a lady was killed you know by you know this and this or this happened and you know led to the the death of that. The way um, a woman is dying. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, so yeah, I think that also you know something that we need to address you know as, as a nation. Yeah. yeah. So as I was telling you offline. Yeah. Um, I just think that there are a lot of things can contribute to such a disaster mm-hmm. and unfortunately I don't know how we can help on every issue mm-hmm. but as a person who is talking on camera or you have a mic meaning the media 
I think there needs to be a lot of responsibility the way we report things. I think that the more we, the more we, we are on social media, the more desensitized we are. So I feel like even with these cases, there is a way to report. There is a responsibility. Okay, on another way, on another on the other side of this, I do feel disappointed. Okay. Why mm. people are acting like it's a new thing, mm. and that pisses me off. Yeah. Because it is not. Women have it's been talking hard. about these issues for a long, long time, mm. and now it's like a challenge. You even pick up, is it a challenge? Mm. We are a post. This one was killed this way. Another one. This right. was killed this. Way, another this. Way. So mm. once you've reported these cases, yeah. Now what? I want us to discuss what the law is doing. I want us to discuss what the justice system is, how it's taking right. this. Because this is not a new phenomenon. This has been happening. It's been the same thing. Yeah. So what are we doing after that? Right. Like so after the reporting. After the reporting and the social commentary on yeah. it and the Providing uh, anger. News, you know, yeah. Which, which I love for us because we get to have exposure, right. but as a government, how are they taking it seriously? There are NGOs geared to handle such or such things. Sure. What are they doing? Right. So I feel like, for example, in the responsibility of reporting, mm. even as you report the dire cases, I want you to also shine a light on the NGOs mm. and all these organizations that are actually doing something for sure. For sure. to help these cases or to help the victims of these cases. Yeah. So I feel like we need an all-rounded coverage of this because when such news comes, what you don't want is to create this complacency like a silly life, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's also like in the responsibility of the reporter, whoever chooses to talk about the issue, yeah. shine a light on at least even one organization. You understand yeah, yeah. that is already doing the work right. so that people can go give into these organizations they can do voluntary yeah. for example probably the families of these cases would need counsel we have therapists who maybe would be willing to donate yeah. their hours yeah. to talk to these people sure. about how they can even cope or create communities so even as you highlight the the gravity of what is happening Please also talk about how we can on. get some reprieve right. from it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just, it's like emotional prostitution mm -hmm. of some sort. Yeah. How people are going through a real pain, mm -hmm. something really, really traumatic. Yeah. And you're just watching it for views. Just creating content. Just around. creating content out of people's pain. Mm -hmm. And then you say, I'm just exposing. Mm -hmm. Exposing like there should what? be more than just telling news, okay, right? exactly mm. i want you to call the law lo the lawmakers right. all these useless people in the parliament mm. are they even talking about it right you and, even like and it's not just growing it. into the bandwagon it keeps happening with the sanitary towel issues with the shakahola issues mm. with this we just talk and then we forget right really yeah, yeah. so now it's femicide do you think people will be talking about this in february I'd like to bet they won't. Yeah, they'll find something else to report around. Eh? Yeah, so I don't know. I just feel like the media stations, mm. they just need to care a little bit for more. Sure, for sure. And even if you create a whole series, survivors of such things, mm. how they can encourage people. So that's what I'm talking about when I say report it, like the responsibilities that I, sure, I think sure. this is important. Mm -hmm. But us acting like, what one are you squeezing? I'm like, where have you been? Mm. It's, it's 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 not like news like it's that. not it's an, this it's has been happening, been happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i think yeah I, I totally concur with you as well i think also the media houses um have a responsibility to also you know um just basically shine the camera on you know the policy makers you know in regards to like what structures are they putting in place you know to make sure that these things don't happen you know because i think you we also having this conversation earlier where um, we're talking of let's say someone who's um, undergone you know gender-based violence or that sort when they go to to report to the police you know like what happens you know like yeah i remember it's never really followed remember, I, up I, I, and, and yeah and, until it's too late you know yeah, for them and when yeah. nothing can be done i so, remember yeah. the age of um investigative journalism yeah and where we would actually see what would happen in such cases. Right. If a man came and say, my wife really beat me, mm. and it's like this, what would the police do? And women right. who come and say, this is happening. So exactly what I was telling you about earlier, mm. some of these women you may find they were being stalked. 
right. for a while mm. and you report and they're like we can't do anything without evidence yeah. and we all know not all of us have the money to hire security right, right so right. what does the government do what do the police right, do yeah. and the reason why i'm worried is because on every other place where we actually interact with police as an authority mm. be it traffic be it wherever it is yeah. they are very highly highly corrupt <laughs> okay and they're always very reactive Sure. So in my mind, I'm like, of course, even in these cases, mm. it's probably the same. It's not, yeah, they probably need a token for them to follow yeah. up or something. Yeah. Why can't we be like, this person, want, they wanted to kill this person, but we've prevented it as the police. Mm. You're mm. always investigating. Good. Investigate. That's part of your duties. Yeah. But also prevention mm. is part of your duty. For sure. And sure. that is how I wish the media houses would approach this or anyone really with an authority. Mm. But mm. all we want to talk about is, oh, and what mm -hmm. just this very surface level level conversations yeah, and yeah. that's why i feel like we need to tap out on that mm. just be for real yeah femicide is not a real a a, a, a new issue mm -hmm. it has been there it's been cutting, yeah. Yeah. yeah so i don't know what we can do but that's how i feel like it 24 the news yeah, just needs to be different started, yeah, yeah started on such a high note um, yeah. yeah, maybe you could also chime in a bit on that. Um, yeah, I think the 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 news, the media houses should just shed some light on the policymakers as to what they're doing to sort of like reduce, you know, the GBV. You know, in that case, there should be such like terrifying consequences. Yeah, there are things I just feel like you don't play with. Or even like clauses to add where if if someone comes to report such a news, like that is actually followed up right exactly yeah like not, not just to wait until you know something, something happens. crazy happens then now you want to be all up on their faces you know trying to see if you can help when it's already too late yeah so yeah. i i was sharing with her the way one of my uh my workmates mm. when their baby was just being um tormented with the house health mm. but he never she never actually had the baby yeah. but was being rough with the baby and there was video evidence okay. but when they went to the police station mm. all they said was First of all, they wanted money, of course. And the second part is, we can't really arrest her unless Until she had done something. And if you want us to arrest her, to teach her a lesson, because sometimes if we do that, station, mm. then they release, you don't actually take them to court, mm. you'd have to pay for that. So mm. if you want us to be your retributors, pay you us. You have to pay us for the service. But on a low level, we can't arrest this anything. person or bring them into questioning because they didn't really hurt your child mm. despite having the evidence Damn. of them being rough yeah i feel like that's such so, a slighting moment for, for them for the family but then it means that the law needs to make space right and for prevention for stuff like that for yeah. prevention exactly because this person will probably go be a house up somewhere else mm. and then now you Carry cut her qualities. when she has actually killed the child exactly when it's already too late and then there was evidence you know that could have possibly then it's something you should have been even if you cannot take her to jail mm. surely as a police person mm. as a policeman or whatever there's something you could have been able to do sure. so if it is true that they can mm. and then the law needs to make space for such mm. things so I think that's why it's fatigue, it's exhausting mm -hmm. talking about some things because why? It yeah, doesn't, it always has the same, it, the it never same, really changes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's how I feel like something needs to go, something needs to change. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it goes back to the legal frameworks, you know, they need to add clauses that can lead to prevention of such cases, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, just back to that, you know, I think this topic has also been really big on social media, you know, where um, unfortunately it's sort of like being, uh, you know, uh, two, the two genders just pitting themselves against each other, you know, mm -hmm. where it always feels like, you know, um, women blaming men and men blaming women, you know. So yeah, yeah you were killed because you were wearing. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I, I hate when it, when it becomes like two genders, you know, pitting themselves against each okay, other. Okay, so let me ask you this, yeah. because you're man in that moment. Yeah. What do you think men can do mm. just to lighten the load of this whole thing yeah, yeah. of DV and, and, and yeah. femicide and all the mm. things? Like, from what you have observed, like yeah. you would say, okay, as men, this is what we need to do. Right, and right. maybe I'll share what I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so first things first, um, for men, I think they should just try Stop and killing. be. 
Okay, wait, but before I even get to that, like, they should just try and be empathetic enough, right? And I don't think this is the best time to start saying, you know, like, not all men, you know, like, every other time, you know. I feel like, like, women do actually understand, like, you know, it's, it's not all men, you know, mm. but, like, this is a point for them to just um, air out their opinions. And now when men come, you know, with the not all men, you know, I feel like they just, they've already it's blocked defensive, their ears. Yeah. yeah, it's already, like, a defensive, so we can't have, and I feel like that's when, this um, gender wars they come in right because everyone now feels like they're they're trying to defend their you know their gender yeah. you know without having to talk about the issue at hand yeah. so yeah there's there's that on men like just try to be empathetic and listen to you know what um you know the, the women are saying you know just and try to find you know a resolution mm. um i think also for women i think what they could do is just you know um try to not try to meet with people morally i know this is not the best advice but like if you're trying to meet with someone that you've met on Tinder, like at crazy odd hours, you know, and like it's just not like being right. Personal responsibility. Kind like, of exactly. Thing. Yeah. Like, like there's just that thing where you can't just be meeting with a stranger, you know, at, at a certain time. Like, I think I feel like there's, there's a moral conversion um, around that, you know. So I think that, like, they could just. I think it's always just appropriate, you know, to meet if you're meeting a stranger, you know, that just don't meet them at odd hours at a weird Secluded place. place. Yeah. Like, just make sure that you're meeting with someone, you know, that you don't know. I mean, just like try to, you know, carry along a friend, you know, just to try and be um, in a good environment where nothing suspicious can be able to happen to you and, you know, leave you in a vulnerable position. So, yeah, those are, you know, some of my two cents on this um, particular issue on, you know, femicide and the whole domestic violence. But, I mean, I also want to know, like, what do you think, you know, like, For what others we have? Okay, so for me, I'll come from a different place. I'll start yeah. with the women. Mm. Well, I think that for the women, Unfortunately, these cases of femicide or DV, um, they happen with men they know. Mm -hmm. So it's a friend that you've known 10 years, it's the brother that you've lived with, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's your father. Mm -hmm. So many of these people that even find themselves in such a situation, they've already had very tumultuous past. Mm -hmm. So what I would say as women is to like give yourself grace also, to know that it's not your fault. Maybe even in those cases, I don't disagree with the personal responsibility thing. Yeah. But even if you were dressed a certain way, you were behaving in a certain way, you were inebriated or whatever, mm -hmm. you still do not deserve exactly. violence upon you. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I think that it's not permission mm -hmm. to, for somebody to come and hurt you. So if I feel like if you give yourself grace on that level, then you can begin to heal if this is something that has happened to you. Mm -hmm. However, what I think we can do on a general level as women, I will talk about what it means when we are talking about this issue. Maybe let's be more open to hear the other side so that we can actually come up with a solution. If we can attack the issue and not necessarily Make the people, mm -hmm. then we can be able to hold people accountable that need people, that need, you know, accountability. Yeah. And I think we may also find that even as women, in terms of us having this conversation where we're not fighting and being defensive all the time, just being vulnerable and honest, we may find that inadvertently or without wanting or knowing, we somehow breed some, some of this environment, mm -hmm. okay? So some things we do makes this possible yeah. because this doesn't happen out of nowhere, mm -hmm. you understand? So we may such. find that there are things that we are contributing mm. to this without us knowing. Mm. You understand? Mm. So it's very, I feel like we can only have the conversation yeah. and don't, we shouldn't be scared of having it wrong. Mm. Me being wrong or not having the most perfect opinion or something does not now mean I am for it or I'm mm. blaming, I'm, I'm victim blaming. Mm. That's one thing I would say. Yeah. I would wish we would stop using these taglines like victim blaming Sazingine mm. because they close our ears. Yeah. A man cannot tell you anything. Mm. You are the one killing us. Mm. Just stop. Right. I wish it was and that not, simple. Not include men in the I wish it was that simple. Mm. Honestly, just stop. I don't, why is it so difficult to kill, to stop killing? Just stop. I wish it was that simple. But it's not. Yeah, but unfortunately, we're in and a we society share the world. Cycles as well. Yeah, mm. so we can protect ourselves as women as much as we want. We can form as many organizations as we want. But if these men are not coming in 
right. into the feminist movement in terms of equality and mm. respect of the sexes mm. then it's you, a it's, one-sided conversation you're not really doing it like wash, you know you're it's like washing a pig mm. it doesn't make sense mm. and as for men i'll just reiterate what you've said empathy just be empathetic a girl doesn't have to be your sister yeah. or your mother or your friend for you to feel for them mm. and i think that also in terms of accountability i feel like men in most of their relationships with other men it's more of a mind your business kind of thing mm. so you literally see your friend going off on mm. their girl mm. and you're like yo this doesn't for look sure. Sure. normal and you be like bro just face your front mm. you don't actually like call yeah. your friend aside like bro yeah. chill yeah. you don't need to be doing all that sure, and I, literally I having a follow up conversation mm. if maybe you were at an outing scene like you were sober you like i didn't like, like you actually confront that yeah thing. you're mm-hmm. like yeah because this can really go from 0 to 100 for like sure, this sure. you can't be doing that. i'd like, rather you even leave this down yeah the yeah. complacency does not help mm-hmm. so that for silence sure. thing that men seem to be having mm-hmm. on a lot of issues mm-hmm. is killing us Sure, so sure. maybe this men that get into that point even you as a man you can go and report mm. be like I I fear for that woman yeah, yeah. I fear for that person my yeah. neighbor their woman is always screaming at night mm. every time that woman will be killed and they had neighbors for sure for sure but Akiku, oh bon, why couldn't she leave why couldn't she leave as if it's something so simple mm. some people want to leave they're followed mm. they're stopped it, it's hard it's hard for them yeah. to leave such a situation uh, yeah and some of them have kids mm. they don't have that financial so you as a man you cannot i feel like that's one thing it's your god given responsibility to be protectors mm. simple yeah yeah it's not just not, protectors not of your yeah of your significant others mm. simple when people would go to war men men you understand yeah, yeah. they would protect their community and i wish sure. that would come back mm. just being your brother's keeper and yeah. making sure you know that they you're not silent on some things there are yeah. things you can face your front yeah, and sure. say this one is not my business but there are other things it's like no the you, complacency you doesn't do that. Yeah. Sure, yeah so the guy doesn't have to even hit the girl for you to speak up just that act of because sometimes even that shouting and going off is very violent you can just be like chill but many don't do that all you do is stoke the fire or you ignore it so just turn a blind eye yeah okay. so if you can be quiet in such a small skill issue what about femicide a woman will be killed in front of you so i feel like that protective instinct in men has been lost and i think we need it back yeah. then we would have less of these cases because it is easier for a man to stop another man for especially sure, physically sure. than that is for, woman. for woman yeah? Yeah. yeah yeah so basically i'm telling you don't leave us alone yeah like like help. that's a woman issue yeah. Now, at the time, yeah that's a woman issue that's the young people issue that's a black people problem you always like it's not in my issue at least until it comes in my front door that's when I'll address it i wish you would stop yeah, that doing would be that. too late yeah, yeah it's yeah. too late by the time it's at your door sure, for sure. yeah yeah totally i agree with that yeah, i think it would also be nice you know if they just um, go the extra mile to check their friends mm-hmm. and make sure that they are able just basically to just nip the bud you know yeah, that's, before it actually yeah. you know, it's found So yeah and since we're just on this conversation yeah I have, I, I know you also I'm um, conversant there's some um, there are a couple of matches that have been um that on the pipeline that have been already I think there's one happening tomorrow on Sunday at Jivanji mm-hmm. um by Inika Inika is also you know an an, an amazing um, advocate you know for who would love to have her Yeah yeah, yeah. I, I tried to have her on but unfortunately she wasn't um, in the country at the moment but she's probably going to join us later mm-hmm. um, yeah, so she's Um, her and a couple of other um, lovely ladies are hosting a match at Jivanji Gardens. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but other than that, there's also a match being hosted um, the coming um, Saturday, on 27. I think it's on 27. Yeah, um, happening at Jivanji Gardens. Maybe we'll just um, add the poster on the mm-hmm. video so for guys to just know. And you know, if you're available, you can also you know just come through, um, help the course, and just I think it's always amazing. You know, when people show up in numbers. You know, I think that's when people do actually realize that you know this is a thing. That you know needs to be addressed. Yeah, so, you will probably yeah. talk to people and no, for sure. They think and you will just sensitize yourself on what's happening. Yeah, you know, like better practices. You know, I think even as men, you know, we also need to show up. You know, just to and learn. Though, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just to learn. It's you not know, a woman's to... match. Mm-hmm, exactly, because yeah. when you don't involve men, then you know, I I feel like it even beats the purpose, right? Mm. It's always so, just nice to have you know both genders 
and you know just people sensitized on um, advocacy and basically you know Doing how to reduce you know this edge and this violence you know in such yeah. in such senses so yeah yeah so yeah so this has been our show <laughs> <laughs> literally it has come <laughs> to yeah. an end and um i just hope you would hear us and please feel free to share in the comments what your issues have been what your opinions are yeah. on this and sure. we will continue to take it up and mm -hmm. all our policy makers all these people we just they should not be sleeping we should yeah, literally it's... bully them into yeah. actually doing their jobs yeah, yeah. i believe so i just feel like let's just all really come together so that 2024 is that year for us where we are actually doing what we need to do right, you know right. but and the year just started please like yeah, let's just make sure we cannot sure continue on this note well. yeah <laughs> we can start the year on with such killing a bad note. Yeah. yeah so yeah so, hopefully yeah. the year gets better you know um people do actually sensitize themselves on what is happening mm -hmm. and best practices you know just to to basically um you know respond rather than react. i know, think we will put all system. those tags in our uh, bio yeah, and yeah. for advice you can go check out all these people that we are talking about for sure. even janet bogwa with the inuadada foundation yeah. so there's so many foundations that are still doing the work mm -hmm. and i think that it's your responsibility as a person to find out where you can plug in for sure and for how sure. you can plug in yeah. yeah so that's all for me i have <laughs> been your co-host so cool. joy gishobi <laughs> yeah, yeah, and i've been running and yeah i guess we'll see you on the next one